Michael Burry became famous after the Big Short movie came out. He's one of just a few investors who successfully shorted the housing market leading up to the great financial crisis and he amassed a small fortune in the process. And by the time he closed his hedge fund, he had earned about 150 times higher returns than the S&P 500 and that makes him one of the best investors of our time. Some people will claim that he was just lucky, but he's actually had quite a few other very successful calls. As an example, he shorted the ARK Innovation Fund in 2021. He also shorted Tesla around the same time. He was also one of the early investors in GameStop, and he's had many other successful calls. Therefore, I think it's worthwhile to follow not only what he's doing on the short side, but also on the long side. And it's interesting to note here that one of his biggest investments is farmland, and yet very few people are talking about that. Following the great financial crisis, Michael Burry did a lot of interviews and one of them he said that I believe that agricultural land with water on site will be very valuable in the future and I've put a good amount of money into that, so I'm investing in alternative investments. Then when he was asked by the interviewer how much he was investing in farmland, he simply answered that I don't want to disclose that, but a significant amount. This interview is now over a decade old, but farmland is an illiquid asset class and typically its owners will hold it for the long run. Michael Burry confirmed in 2015 that he was still heavily investing in farmland as the end of the big short movie read that the small investing he still does is all focused on one commodity, which is water, and he had previously clarified that the best way to invest in water is through farmland. And so today I'm going to dive into why you may want to also consider farmland for your portfolio and then I'm going to discuss how I am personally investing in farmland. Hey everyone, this is Jules Sherr, a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about why I am quite heavily investing in farmland. I'm going to discuss three reasons why and how you can replicate my strategy. Before I get started, please let me know in the comment section below if you would be interested in me covering more of these alternative investments like farmland or would you prefer that I keep focusing on REITs instead. And then second, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. So I think that there are three main reasons why I think that Michael Burry is heavily investing in farmland. The first reason is that it provides stability to your portfolio during times of crisis. Michael Burry is what you would typically describe as a perma bear. He tends to see the glass rather half empty than half full. He is very worried about black swans, inflation, geopolitics, wars and other potential risks. And with that in mind, it makes a lot of sense that he heavily invests in farmland because it's arguably the safest asset class in the world. It's absolutely essential to the survival of the human race. It cannot be inflated away. We cannot make more farmland. It generates steady cash flow and the demand for food is steadily rising over time as a result of the growing population and the rising middle class. This explains why the value of farmland has been incredibly resilient during past crises. This includes a great financial crisis, the pandemic, as well as the recent surge in interest rates. The most recent example is 2022 when the rate hiking cycle began and this is when most most asset classes including stocks, bonds, uh, gold, crypto even, all collapsed in value, but farmland kept gaining in value, it rose by about 10% in 2022. So if you're worried about the future and you think that we may be facing some other black swans down the line, such as, I don't know, China invading Taiwan or perhaps the war in the Middle East uh, escalating further or even the one in Europe, then it may make sense to include some farmland in your portfolio simply for the sake of diversification, it will help you sleep better at night. Then the second reason why Burry is investing in farmland is that he fears that inflation will get out of control down the line. Michael Burry deletes most of his own tweets and that makes it a bit difficult to follow his latest thoughts, but there are a few Twitter pages, or sorry, X pages that take screenshots of their tweets to keep an archive of his latest thoughts. And if you scroll through one of these pages, I'll put a link in the description of this video, you'll see there that he worries a lot about inflation and in that context, farmland makes a lot of sense in his portfolio. He seems to fear that we could be facing hyperinflation sometime in the future and in that scenario, farmland is arguably the best investment you could own because it shows the highest correlation to the CPI. We often hear financial pundits talk about gold when referring to good inflation hedges, but farmland is arguably an even better inflation hedge because it produces the most basic necessity, which is food. Gold, on the other hand, is much less of a necessity and most of its value is really just a function of speculation and market sentiment. 
And then the third reason to consider Farmland as part of a diversified portfolio is that it offers competitive total returns, especially for a relatively safe asset class. Over many of the past multi-decade time periods, Farmland has generated roughly 10% average annual total returns, and that's unleveraged. So if you added a mortgage on top of it and you leverage your capital, you could have earned close to 12 to 15% average returns on your equity. And that's quite a bit more than most other stocks or bonds or even gold would offer. Historically, Farmland has outperformed even the S&P 500 over many time periods, and that's despite being far safer as an investment. Its volatility has been a lot lower. It has offered the diversification benefits also offers a lot of income and so with that in mind its risk adjusted returns have been very competitive and while farmland isn't cheap today you can still expect pretty strong returns going forward simply because if you're getting a four to five percent yield uh, simply from renting the land to a farmer all you need is another four to five percent of annual growth to reach double digital returns and that seems quite reasonable given that historically farmland has gained even more value and the same drivers that push farmland values higher still exist today the population is steadily rising so increasing the demand for food at the same time the middle class in many of the emerging countries is also rising this leads to changes in diets the more heavy consumption of proteins which then requires more far farmland as well and then thirdly we are not making more land on the contrary a lot of farmland goes into better use developments every year and so the total quantity of farmland may be even declining even as the population and the middle class is rising and so because of these demographic factors, it's quite likely that farmland will keep gaining value over the long run. We, of course, cannot predict how farmland or any other asset class will perform in any given specific year. But over the long run, if you're earning a 4 or 5% yield, and on top of that, you add 3, 4, 5% of growth, you should get quite competitive total returns in the future. And so to recap, it provides valuable diversification in a chaotic world, then it provides inflation protection and provides very competitive risk-adjusted total returns. I think that these are the three reasons why Michael Burry is heavily investing in farmland. And they're also the reasons why I'm personally investing in farmland. And here's how I do it. So if you're an individual investor like me, your options are quite limited here because unless you're managing tens of millions of capital, you're not going to be able to build a well-diversified portfolio by geography, weather risk, and crop. And so because of this, it's not going to be realistic for you to buy farmland in the private market like Michael Burry does or, or Bill Gates or even Warren Buffett. Instead, I'm investing in farmland with two other methods. The first one is through real estate investment trusts or REITs in short. Today, there are two of them in the US. The first one is Glassstone Commercial and the second one is Farmland Partners. Both allow you to invest in farmland by simply buying their stock, which is publicly traded on the stock market. The main benefits of these REITs is that they allow you to gain diversified exposure to farmland with professional management and you remain liquid as well. But on the flip side, there are also a few downsides as well. The main one is that if you're looking for stability in your portfolio, you're not going to get it here. If you look at the past share price performance, Glassstone Land or Farmland Partners, you'll see that they've been very volatile historically. And so while I think that over the long run, their returns are going to closely correlate with those of Farmland over the short run, they really won't protect your portfolio from volatility. Secondly, these REITs use quite a bit of leverage and so they are quite heavily impacted by the recent surge in interest rates and this increases the risks of these farmland REITs when compared to traditional farmland investments. And then thirdly, in the case of farmland partners, it's not just a pure farmland investment because the company also has a brokerage and a farmland asset management business and the risk and return characteristics of these businesses are quite a bit higher than those of a traditional farmland investment. Even then, I think that these REITs can be quite attractive for patient, long-term oriented investors who will not panic over the near-term volatility and will be able to maintain a long-term outlook. I myself own a position in Farmland Partners, ticker symbol FPI. I think that it owns high quality assets, its balance sheet is reasonable, the management is well aligned with shareholders, and yet its valuation is today discounted, the management is buying back stock, and over the long run, I expect it to do fairly well for its shareholders. And then the second way how I gain exposure to Farmland is through crowdfunding. Today, there are quite a few of these platforms. The biggest ones are Farm Together, Acre Trader, Farm Funder, and there are a few others. These are essentially asset management companies that specialize in farmland investments and they use technology in the form of crowdfunding to raise capital more efficiently, which then allows them to offer more competitive fees for the investors. My favorite platform is Farm Together because of three key reasons. The first reason is simply that I've known their founder for many years and I even had the opportunity to invest as an angel investor in their company. The second reason is that they tend to focus on farmland deals that offer high yields and I personally prefer to focus on earning high income rather than speculate on growth. 
And then the third reason is that they take a very active approach to farmland. They are not just buying land and waiting for it to gain value. They will often buy farmland that they know suffer some issues. They will work on resolving those issues to create value for the investors. Here we can take an example of a deal that they are currently offering on their website. It came out a few days ago. It's already 67% funded, I see here. So there's not much capacity left in case you're interested in investing in it. But it's, this is a citrus deal. It's offering a near 10% cash yield with a 10% hold and 0% leverage. And so this already shows you some of the pros and cons. The main pro is that they're able to reach these very high yields by being selective, finding off-market transactions, creating value themselves. But one downside for some of you might be the long-term hold. This is an illiquid asset class. It's going to be a 10-year hold. There is no guarantee that there is going to be a liquidity event before that. So if you're going to invest in farmland through a platform like Farm Together, you need to have a long-term outlook. Over the 10-year hold, they're expecting to earn a 2.4 time multiple on your money. And what I think is quite attractive here is that they think they can achieve these high returns while using zero leverage. There are pros and cons to everything. The main pros here in the case of crowdfunding is that with Farm Together, you can get really high yields. You also get the real benefits of farmland and stability, it's inflation protection. This is a real private farmland investment that you're gonna own. You have professional management. I think that these guys have a great track record. They also themselves invest in all of their deals. As I said, I've known the, their founder for years. Or I, I hold them in very high regard. But then on, on, on the con side, this is going to be illiquid. So you need to have a long-term outlook. If you think you're going to need this money in two years, then this obviously isn't for you. But also investment minimums. And so clearly it's, it's not suited for everyone. But basically how I achieve my farm and allocation is by combining crowdfunding with REITs. And I think that the combination of both affords me the best risk reward that I can get today. If you want to learn more about this deal that they currently have on their website, I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. I'm not getting paid to promote this deal, but I think it's quite attractive. And otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below what you think about Farmland as an investment. And then finally, once more, if you could please click the like button, that really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. See you at my next one. Bye-bye.